In the 16th century, French, Spanish, and Portuguese fishermen ventured across the Atlantic, following reports of new waters brimming with a seemingly infinite supply of highly prized cod. They established fisheries off the coasts of Newfoundland and New England, and from this point on, fishermen have tapped this supply, hauling in huge numbers of these giant fish without any noticeably adverse effects on population levels. In the 1960s, however, new technology changed everything. Modern trawlers set out with massive storage capacities. Armed with electronic navigation devices and fish locating sonar, this type of vessel quickly came to dominate the industry. Before this innovation, an average of 300,000 tons of cod were being caught per year. But with these advancements, this number shot up to 800,000 tons annually by 1968. From this point on, overall population numbers steadily declined until, in 1992, the Canadian government called a moratorium on Atlantic cod fishing in these areas. They remained closed until limited openings were allowed in 2006, which permitted for the harvest of 2,700 tons of cod per year. In 2007, experts estimated the stocks of cod were a mere 1% of what they had been only 30 years earlier. Tragically, this type of story is far from rare. All of the species listed are currently harvested unsustainably and have dangerously low population sizes. The Marine Stewardship Council, or MSC, takes a stand on the issue of overfishing. It aids consumer decisions by labeling sustainable products, and the decisions made by the council take environmental, social, and economic interests into account. The organization was inspired by the 1992 Atlantic Cod Industry Collapse in Nova Scotia. The intent of this certification is to create a sustainable market for fish. Oftentimes, however, the decisions that the council makes focus more on the social and economic sides of issues. As a result, many of the environmental hazards associated with overfishing are overlooked. In 2006, Walmart pledged to only sell MSC certified fish, and the MSC's profit exploded. Since Walmart and other large retailers have increased the demand for MSC fish, the number of fisheries given certification has skyrocketed. With this economic opportunity, some claim that the MSC has started to give sustainable labels to fisheries that have an unknown impact on the environment, resulting in misleading labeling. Many supermarkets stock shelves with labeled products in order to market to consumers who are increasingly beginning to care about where their fish comes from. Some argue that the fact that the MSC is a private organization, rather than a government-run program, is a problem, because it forces the council to consider profits, which shifts focus from its express purpose, encouraging sustainability. Many critics believe that the original intent of the MSC is a legitimate effort to stop overfishing, but argue that the organization has strayed from its original plan. In the end, the overarching goal of creating a sustainable fishing market is beneficial for both the environment and industry. By using sustainable practices, not only will fish populations be protected, but the industry will become more reliable in the future. The consumer holds the power in this market. If we decide to remove unsustainably harvested fish from our diets, the problem of overfishing will largely cease to exist. This power therefore puts a great deal of responsibility on the consumer. Those of us who intend to continue to indiscriminately consume fish must be aware of the consequences of our actions. The first step of this process is education. Learning the harm that overfishing is causing and the future repercussions of continuing such behaviors. While it is not necessary to erase fish from our diets, the source of the fish we buy impacts the market. If we continue to choose to purchase from unsustainable sources, there will eventually be nothing left of these sources. The New England Aquarium right here in Boston helps this cause by informing more than 800 supermarkets around the U.S. about sustainable practices in the seafood industry. On the other side of the country, the Monterey Bay Aquarium publishes a frequently updated list for consumers to reference at the supermarket. This list claims to provide science-based recommendations that help consumers and businesses make ocean-friendly seafood choices. It is organized by region, giving a detailed projection on what's okay to sustainably eat in different parts of the country. The aquarium also recommends that customers ask about the source of the fish. It is critical that customers know where their product is coming from, especially with the serious issue of mislabeling. Because in the end, the decision is in our hands, 